Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to get a character to sit in a chair. By the end of the video we'll have this scene here. The guy will walk across, sit down in the chair. Looks simple, let's get going. Okay, so here I am in a brand new 2019 project in Unity and the first thing that I want to do is import this animation package from GitHub. Now this is an open source package, you can use this uh, to do whatever you want with it. It's got a, a very permissive license. And in this installation section it tells you how to do what I'm about to do, but basically I want this URL here. And then if I go back into my editor, I go to Windows and Package Manager, click on the little plus up here, say add package from Git URL, paste it in, click add, wait a few moments. So the package is now imported, so I can close that down. And if I look inside of my packages folder, I have this new Wizards Codes animation. And inside of here is an animation folder. And what you get is a, a bunch of animations, but that's not really what I'm offering here. Uh, there are animations in here, but they're not great. If you just look at this one as one example, this is a melee attack. I am not a very good animator, but there aren't, or at least I haven't found good open source animations yet. So if you are an animator, please donate them, make this a, a much better project. If you know of where I can get some, let me know and I'll pull them in. But they're good enough to get going. Um, what is important here is we have a whole load of scripts inside of here that we are going to use uh, in this project to create the sitting character. How do we do that? I'm not going to go through everything step by step. I'm going to show you the various pieces as they come together so that you can reuse what you get in this folder. So if you go inside of the scenes folder, uh, you'll find that there is a sitting scene and in here we can see we have a chair, we have a model and a couple of buttons in the UI like we saw in the intro. Excellent. Now we can't actually edit that inside of the packages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my scenes folder here and I'm actually just going to copy that so that I have a copy that I can work with uh, my sitting scene. I'll call it just for differentiation so I know I'm in the right space. If I hit play here, you'll see that uh, we have some functionality. He's standing and idling. But if I hit the sit button, he doesn't do anything. Why is that? Well, let's go and have a look in our console. And sure enough, we have an error here. Uh, this first one is saying there's no head transform set up. Look, that's disabled. We don't really worry about that. That should probably be a warning rather than an error. Um, sets destination can only be called on something with an active nav mesh. Ah, of course, I forgot to bake my nav mesh. And bring up the scene view, go to bake, hit the bake button, and we now have a navigation mesh, of course. All right, so now if we hit play and hit sit, we run over to the chair, we sit. Ah, we don't sit. Why don't we sit? Well, that is because this package doesn't currently have an animation for sitting. Contributions welcome. So we need to go and get one. How do we get one? Well, if we go to Mixamo.com and we search for sitting, we'll find a whole bunch of them. But in this case, I'm going to go with sitting uh, impatient. Just one of those. That one looks fairly good. So we're going to click download. Make sure we've got FPX for Unity selected and then click download again. And we're going to save that into our project. So I'm going to save as, and then I'm going to navigate into my project. Create a folder inside of here for it. So new folder, call it animations. Go inside of there and save that in that folder. And when I go back to Unity, that will be discovered by Unity. Go into my project view. There is my animations folder and there is my sitting animation. Open the inspector and we can see that animation is there. Okay, now we need to apply that to our man in our scene. And by default, he uses the basic humanoid controller. And as you can see here, it says override this, right? The idea here is I create my own controller using my own animations. So I go create animation animator override controller, call it what I want, my controller. And then I'm going to set the base animation to the basic humanoid controller that comes with the package. 
And now we have all of these animations that have some default settings, but as you saw, the sitting idle setting is um, uh, just a standing animation. It's not a sitting animation. So let's drop our sitting animation in here and hit play. Now we hit sit, runs over and doesn't sit. Why not? Ah, I remember why not. If I go to the Mixamo import, uh, you'll see that the rig is set to generic, whereas our guy is humanoid. So we need to change that to humanoid. Hit apply, hit play, hit sit, runs over, and doesn't sit. Why is he not sitting? Uh, it's really quite simple. I have not changed the controller over to the one that we created with our sitting animation in. Should drop that in there like that, hit play. Okay, and he sits. Now, it's a little jerky, as you'll see. Now, we're going to come back to that later on, and we're going to improve on that later on. Uh, it'll be much better by the end of this video. All right, so next up, how does all that actually work? Well, let's take a look. We'll start off with the UI, because that's what's actually triggering these things. We go down into the UI. We can find that we have these two buttons here, and scrolling down, we see that they're... Uh, tied to the sitting behaviors on the sit method, which is part of the test UI. So we'll open that up. This method here just calls out to a controller and tells it, tells it to sit at the sit position. What's the sit position? Well, that's defined inside of here. And you can see that that is a, an interaction position, which is part of the chair. Now, how do, why is that important? What we could do quite easily is create an on click on the chair that passed in this interaction position. And that can then be used for all sorts of things. So this could be a coffee machine, for example. And if the character is going to pick up a coffee, they could go and stand at the interaction position, then get the coffee. What they're going to do here by interacting is they're going to sit on it. So what actually happens there, we go into this controller, which is on the character. And we see we have a sit, which takes a sit position, which is a transform because it needs a rotation and a position. And the first thing we do is we call move to the sit position. And then there's a bunch of callbacks. There's three callbacks. So we'll not worry about what this callback does for the moment. Let's just go straight through to the move to object uh, method. And you can see that this instructs the character to move to a defined position and optionally make callbacks at various points in the process. And the callbacks are, the, we, uh, we have the position, not the callbacks, the position we're going to move to we know about. The first one is the arriving callback, the arrived callback, and the stationary callback. So that's as you're getting close, once you've got there, and then once you've stopped after having arrived. So those are the three steps that you can take in each of these. So what we do in the move to method is we set up the callbacks inside of the connector. That's the nav mesh connector. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And then we tell it via the nav mesh to move to a position. So this is just standard nav mesh agent uh, work. So what does this connector do? Well, that is, if I go through to where it's defined, you can see it's this nav mesh connector. What's that? Let's go through and have a look. The nav mesh, con co the nav mesh connector converts a nav mesh, ag well, a nav mesh agent's movement to parameters for the animation controller. All right, so I'm not going to go through in this in detail. Um, it's actually easier to see if we look at it inside of the project itself. Um, so if we have a look at our character here, we can see that the nav mesh connector is here and we have a maximum speed, a normal speed factor. So that's a, the fraction of the maximum speed that they would normally move at. The arriving distance is used when calculating are you arriving. So within, when you're within 0 0.2 meters of the destination, then it triggers that arriving distance, that arriving callback. 
uh, the animation parameters they are used to control the motion inside the animation controller we'll take a quick look at that in a moment and then the debug is the click to move that we've been using uh, at various points of this video so what are these parameters well if we go and look at the controller itself uh, go to the base layer um, we can see we have the forward and turn parameters here okay and those both feed into a blend tree inside of the movement which are used to make the character move about okay excellent and then we also have this sitting parameter but we've not seen how that is used just yet so where does that get used let's go back to our code and we're going to go back to our um, controller sit and we'll go through to our move to again and remember we have these callbacks the first callback here is going to say well turn to the sit position rotation so that's going to make our character turn to face the correct way in order to sit down on the chair when we are so that's when arriving so just before we get there we're going to start turning the next one is arrived and the last one is stationary we're not passing in a callback there so it won't do anything so this middle one is when we have arrived what happens here well we're setting a bit of an offset to the sitting position why is that well that's because each animation is slightly different and the precise positioning of the character uh, is dependent on the animation so this allows us through a parameter that's set in this sitting behavior to create an offset um, to make sure that the character actually sits on the chair we'll look at that in a few moments and then we're going to call another move to this time sending in the new position which has this offset uh, null for the first two callbacks but on the final one when we're stationary we're going to set ik to active to true is act ik active true that's a parameter inside of this behavior and then we're going to set the boolean sitting to true all right so let's take a look at this ik uh, and the offset positioning let's go back to our project and here's the humanoid controller which is what we just had there and we here we are exposing is ik active and so that will enable us to look at what's happening and here is our offset let's actually make that to zero so if we didn't have that this is what it would look like hit play let's just maximize that hit sit and you can see he's not actually sitting on the chair because we uh, changed that uh, uh, offset. So let's put that back again. And now when we play, hit sit. He moves back and sits onto the chair because of that offset. So you're going to want to tune that offset for the specifics of your animation that you're using. And so what about that IK? Well, I'm going to leave it in play and just bring it back. I'm going to turn IK off and watch his feet. Let me just zoom in in the scene view and you'll be able to see it a lot better. Watch his feet specifically. See how they've dropped down into the floor? Uh, that's because, again, the animation, in this case, it's not a great animation. And depending on what model you're using, uh, he could drop down into the floor or he could be uh, have his feet up in the air. Uh, there's all sorts of different re things that can go wrong here. And we want to make sure that his feet are actually on the floor, placed firmly on the floor. And that's what our IK is about here. So if I turn it back on again, you see he picks his feet up and keeps them on the floor. So how do we do that? Well, if you look at our chair, you'll see there's a left foot and a right foot position, right? So let's move, let's move the right foot one forward like that. And when I hit play and ask him to sit again, watch his right foot. See, he's got his right foot forward. How's that happening? Well, let's go back to our code again. Remember, we were setting IK active inside of here to do this. And how does that work? Well, let's find here is an on animator IK method. And it's saying if the IK is not active, then return. Don't do anything. 
But if it is active, then make sure that our right foot is taking the position where a position and rotation of that uh, right foot positioning and likewise the left foot. And so what we can actually do is we can change the sitting position of our character simply by moving those objects. Let's go back to be able to see it in the scene view. Hit the sit button. And I can move this about and you know, it's, some things don't work. It's gone through the chair there, but you can adjust the sitting position however you want. We could make him rotate his foot outward a little bit. Okay, now I'm using the simplest possible IK here in order to uh, make this happen. Okay, so what we want to do is to be able to uh, click on the chair and have our character sit on that chair. So we're going to go into our assets folder and create a scripts folder. And we're going to create a new script. We'll call it um, chair interactable. Okay, and let's put that in a namespace. Wizards code spike. Spike is just something that I don't intend to keep. Uh, this doesn't actually belong inside of the animations package, so I'll put it in some other package in the future. For now, I'm just going to show you how to code it. Okay, and we're going to use on mouse down. And to start off with, we'll say debug log chair clicked. All right, good. Put that script on our chair. The chair already has colliders on it, I believe. Oh, it doesn't. So I need to add a box collider. I think we'll just be fine. Just needs to be a trigger. We don't want it to get in the way. And let's make it it's already the right size. Excellent. So hit play. And when we click on it, we see in the bottom here, chair clicked. Excellent. Now, it actually took it as a move there, which is something we don't want to do. We can fix that by going to the uh, Neo and turning off this enable click to move. So now I can click and the character won't move. See? Okay. All right, so now we are clicking. So what we want to do is we want to do the same thing that we're doing inside of the UI script that we have here. We want to call controller sit position. Okay, but in this case, we already know the interaction point because it is a part of this object. So I'm just going to set that up in the field so we can allow it to be somewhere else in a different part of the structure. But uh, by default, it's going to be pointing back to itself. So interaction point. And that is going to be interaction point position. Okay, and where is this controller going to come from? Well, if we go and look at the sitting behavior, we see the controller is the humanoid controller. So let's put that in here too. There we go. We have both. Uh, needs to be import. Uh, they need the using statement to bring that in. Don't need that to be public. Ah, it's not compiled. Oh, it takes a transform, not a position. So I should just do that. So now it compiles OK. So we're, we're good there. All right. And so now we can go back to our project. So now I just need to set these two pieces up. So let's set the interaction point for this object. And in this case, I'm just going to drag the human in here. But we could use a script to assign that uh, at runtime. Uh, but we're just taking the easy route here, moves over, turns around, sits down. Simple as that. So we can do a lot of improvement to this. We can fine tune the animations and put some transitions between positions. And I will indeed be improving this open source project as I continue to work on it. And I'd love you to help me too. So download it, use it, contribute to it. We'll all be better together. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.